Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins and welcome to another Friday 5 Minute Makes. Now today's a lovely quick and easy card for you that you can do in a range of different colours and different shapes as well. So I'm going to start with some of my trusty Distress Oxide but I'm going to do a super quick technique for covering a background today and then I've also got some nesting dies. These are kind of going to be the main things besides cardstock that you're going to need. So first of all we're going to cover a panel of cardstock with our inks. So I'm going to pop a blending mat down and just make a note of kind of where on the blending mat my, um, my paper covers and then I'm going to just squidge Yes, I did say squidge <laughs> my colours here all into each other a little bit. So all four of the, my favourite colours. And let's bring green here and blue here. Sorry, I said four of my colours, six of my colours. So these are kind of like my go-to colours for a rainbow technique. So I'm going to spritz these with ink like so and then I'm going to smooch this around on some cardstock so just pressing the ink around like so and this is going to give us a really lovely ink blended kind of effect uh, background but without the need to take the time to actually do the ink blending so I think that's all nicely smooched there and what I tend to do is if I've got time is just leave that and just leave it for a few minutes uh, and that's just going to make sure that the paper or the cardstock underneath has absorbed as much of the colour as possible because when we lift this up we are going to get a little bit of um, kind of water that's sitting on the surface or colour that's sitting on the surface and I'll show you I mean like so. So you see this edge here? That's just excess colour. Now we can just go in and we can mop up. We're not going to be using the entire panel. I tend to do this much larger than I need and then I pick and choose my favourite areas from all of the inking. So uh, I'm really loving kind of this area here. The orange has blended in a bit but that's fine. We can sort of use that area more for our sentiment if we want. So give this a little whiz dry with your heat gun. Now that's dry, I'm going to cut this down to around about six by six inches. And the way I've determined this is I have got my chosen card base, which is this square one, which is almost a seven by seven. It's not quite seven by seven, um, but because that's almost seven by seven, I'm going to cut this down to six by six and that's going to sit nicely on top of there. So I'm cutting along the two edges uh, that I really like and then I'm going to measure my six inches from here. So there's one. I might just bring that a little bit further and cut up a bit more of the blue just so that we have... That wasn't a very perfect, perfectly straight cut. And then... Which way am I cutting? This way... There we go. And all of these scraps I tend to keep as well because they're going to come in really handy for other cards in the future. So then again, like so. So I've got myself a nice rainbow background. Uh, that was still a little bit damp, so I got a little bit of feathering around the edge, but I'm not too worried about that. Now what you want to do is cut yourself another panel of cardstock exactly the same size again. Uh, it might be helpful for you to cut it a few millimetre either way longer. Okay, so now we've got our panel of cardstock exactly the same size as our coloured panel. We're going to start creating some patterns. Now I'm going to take some nesting dies and I'm going to take two, so one slightly larger and one slightly smaller, and place them on my panel like so. Now you might need to make sure that you've got quite a large die cutting machine for this. Alternatively use smaller dies and I'm just going to place them so that they've got a nice even border all the way round. Let's just grab some tape there we go press that down there and while I'm here at the same time I can do some more 
So I like to come off the edge a little with these. Oh, I don't want two that are too close together. So I kind of want to go for one and then two down. So missing one out. Let's pop it onto this edge as well. I'll run these ones through first of all. So there's my first cuts done. So what I'm going to do is carefully remove each of the panels and place them on my cardstock. So on the piece that we've colored, being very careful with everything if we can. So peeling that tape off nice and gently. And we're literally keeping almost everything besides the parts that are inside the hexagon frames. So peel this one off very, very slowly and gently. Put that there. And again, just here, nice and gently. Just a tip for you, if you do find that you've accidentally torn your paper or your cardstock um, by peeling off the tape a little bit heavy handed, one thing you can do is emboss the entire design. So maybe just a dotty or a stripey or something, uh, a little bit of pattern all over it and that will just hide any areas that that's happened to. And that will go inside there like so. So you can start to see what's happening here. I'm going to carry on and do another layer of these as well um, in exactly the same way. I might put this one up here. So again, just placing everything back together, putting things where they should be and just making sure that you're kind of happy with the overall composition there. Uh, I think that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. We can see we've got them lovely rainbow colours coming through. I've got enough space to pop a sentiment there if I want to. I can switch that round and uh, have a play with which orientation that will be, but I've got some really fun designs coming through. So now just to adhere all that down, and I'm going to do that with foam tape. Now I've adhered down all of my, um, I suppose it's my waist, it's actually the negative areas of the die cuts onto the coloured panel, so I can now glue the panel onto the card base. Now the reason I don't um, do my inking and my colour on directly onto the card base and then just attach these on top is because A, I want this nice white frame around the edge and I could mask that off, but also um, if you're doing anything like inking, ink blending, watercolour as I did and something goes quite sort of wrong because it's not always predictable, uh, you haven't then lost an entire card base. So I've got a bit of sticky tape there just remove that. Now, as I often do, I'm going to finish this card off with a sentiment. I'm going to use black, which will contrast against the bright colours and the uh, nice amount of white that we've got there as well. And the sentiment that I've chosen has come from my Textures Sentiments for All pack. Now, um, I use this all the time. Um, I'm just going to pop that just there, I think. I'm sort of playing with different compositions. I could just put it in the middle there, however I wish. Um, I think I think along there will be perfect. So um, again, I'm going to raise that up onto foam tape. Um, if you are okay with posting or hand delivering a card so you can use lots of foam, that's fine. This will be my second layer of foam though. So I probably won't be posting this one if this would be one I'd hand deliver, um, but do bear that in mind. You can of course go with flat layers. You'll get, still get a nice dimensional look and textured look, but um, obviously you won't have like the drop shadows that we've got there between the layers if you do that. So just popping that there in the center. And as always, again, I'm going to finish this off with a little bit of ink splats and I think I'm going to go with a black ink so this is just a black ink spray uh, there's lots of different brands around there I'm just seeing if my sentiment doesn't quite look straight um, and just gently lift that and just give that a bit of a tweak upwards and I'm just going to flick a little bit of black ink around a few bigger drops more to two corners so it'll be down to the bottom left and up towards the top right. And then just allow that to dry. So there is 
another quick make for you this Friday. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, please do subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of the Friday five minute makes. Um, tend to use rainbow colours because I just really, really love rainbow colours at the moment, but there's going to be lots of things. I will concentrate on some five minutes of sympathy cards as well at some point, so stay tuned for those. I'd love it if you could give this video a thumbs up and hopefully I'll see you again next week for another five minute makes. Take care. Thank you.